This week we've heard from a number of house builders, Barrett's, Bovis Homes, Barclay and Redrow amongst others, and the message is pretty much the same across the board. Record revenues, record profits, and Bovis said today that some of the corporate targets it had set for 2020 will be met by December this year. That's the speed at which the sector is moving for the house builders. Well, Clyde Lewis joins us now from Peel Hunt. Um, Clyde, good to talk to you. What's been behind um, this uh, run that's given these house builders these wonderful results? I think ultimately it's a combination uh, of factors, certainly a uh, robust economic backdrop with low unemployment, a bit of wage growth, um, modest interest rates, a combination of that in terms of the, the demand side. On the supply side, the government have realised there was a major problem being created with a lack of housing output and they've got behind various policies, particularly help to buy, but also freeing up the planning system to get a little bit more land available to, to builders to build more. And I think that combination has meant that they are starting to get back to volumes where they were in 2006, 2007. And at the same time, the control and costs has been better, uh, particularly on the land side. And that uh, has combined to, to generate some pretty good results. Some of the critics of Help to Buy say that all it's done is inflated prices and in some cases uh, helping the wealthy to upgrade, uh, certainly according to the Sunday Telegraph. Um, what's your view on Help to Buy overall? Uh, I'm, I'm mindful of the fact as well that some of these house builders are paying their very senior management some enormous sums in terms of bonuses because they're reaching these lofty targets in part, I believe, been generated by help to buy. Is that a fair assumption? Uh, I, I think help to buy has, has done what the government wanted it to do, and that was to increase the supply of new housing. I mean, but to, to blame help to buy on house price inflation, I think that's misplaced. Um, you know, in, 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 in terms of the absolute numbers, about 170,000 properties have been sold using help to buy since 2013. You know, so that's averaging, say, 30,000, 35,000 over the last five years. Um, that would put that in a context of about a million homes that are transacted every year. Uh, it's, it's a bit like the end of the tail wagging the, the housing dog, not even the tail wagging the dog, uh, to, to say that help to buy properties are driving um, house prices in the UK. Ultimately, new houses take their pricing from what's going on in the second-hand market. Uh, and if you look at the data over the last couple of years, house price inflation has trended down. Um, and we're probably running around a couple of percent right now. You, you mentioned as well the economic backdrop uh, with uh, record low interest rates, of course, recently. Interest rates have started to rise. We're getting some murmurings from some of the Bank of England uh, Monetary Policy Committee to suggest that they're going to go for a slow um, rate rise uh, strategy. Do you see this as beginning to see itself felt? We've seen some of the recent evidence suggesting that house prices um, are on the way down, especially here in London and the South East. Uh, do you see this affecting some of the profits from here on in for these large house builders? But look, if, if house prices fall, then yes, profits will, will fall for the, uh, for the new house builders, no doubt about that. But if you look back historically, house prices have only really fallen when you know, the UK economy as a whole has moved into recession uh, and GDP has fallen for two, three, four quarters and you've seen the corresponding rise in, uh, in unemployment. Um, occasionally you get little sort of regional pockets and London tends to be the, the most um, frequent pocket, if you like, that, that, that does have little mini ups and downs in terms of price. But that's partly because there are more external factors driving house prices in London than there are across the country. I mean, I think if you take the sort of the, the rest of the national market, house prices are performing better than London. London is certainly a little bit softer than, uh, than elsewhere right now um, because affordability is probably more stretched in, in London and obviously fears about you know, city jobs around Brexit are certainly higher here. You've got some issues about sort of money from Chinese investors or Singaporean uh, investors being uh, harder to get offshore. So some of those factors that have played out over the last couple of years are, are no longer there. Let's take a look at a couple of um, house builders that you think perhaps maybe are those that are going to weather the storm best, if indeed there is a storm coming, um, and what you say perhaps maybe not so much. What, what are your picks in the sector? 
I mean, we, we, we're not expecting a storm. Um, you know, I think uh, the balance sheets for the sector are in very good shape. I mean, the the debt profile that the businesses had back in 2006, 7, 8 uh, have been completely replaced with, with net cash. Um, and, you know, the cash flow that they can generate and demonstrated that they can generate if they stop buying land is, is, is also very reassuring as well. So we are still quite positive on the sector, given we expect government support to, to be maintained. The big caveat is what happens to the economy around Brexit. You know, if we do slip into recession, a cyclical sector like the house builders will, will obviously come under pressure. But if we don't get a recession, if the UK muddles through and we see, you know, GDP flat to, to up to one, two, three percent, then the house builders will continue to perform very well. There is no pressure on their uh, cost base, certainly in terms of land, for the next couple of years. Build whether it's labour or materials, will, I think, uh, have some upward pressure uh, in that sort of in environment. Um, but ultimately, we are very positive on, on most of the stocks, to be honest. Our preferred picks, uh, amongst the bigger ones, we would probably highlight Barrett uh, and Barclay as the uh, the two most attractive of the big four. Um, but I think, uh, you know, the likes of Persimmon and TW, Taylor Wimpy, uh, have both got uh, big attractions in terms of their dividend yields. Uh, the whole sector has got a huge amount of attraction from its uh, dividend yields currently as well. But you know, we're looking to try and pick the, the best value names out of the, the space, and I think we would probably highlight Red Row and Countryside as, as the two that offer the best mix of growth, balance sheet, and valuation. Just one final question. Um, we are hearing a little bit about the, the Letwin report, the Oliver Letwin report. What is this going to bring to the sector? Is this something that's going to cause a bit of a headwind? I, I suspect not. I mean, I think um, Oliver Letwin has, has had a, a sort of a, a task to go and explore ways to try and improve output from, from bigger housing sites. Um, I think uh, the government is keen to try and boost output, and in particular from bigger sites. And I think the, the conclusion that I think he's likely to come to is that um, coming up with different tenure options, so not just private housing, but various different forms of social housing, um, probably built to rent or private rental uh, model within their shared ownership, such that you've got, again, a wider um, demand pot to, to pick from. Um, but I think you know, it's been well flagged already that he's explored the land banking um, criticism that's often been, been levelled at the house builders, and I think uh, he's dismissed that because uh, every house builder will tell you if they can build and they can sell, they will get on and build and sell. They don't want to sit there and uh, uh, and try and create value from, from just holding land. They want to make money from building houses and selling them. So you're not concerned that this is going to uh, bring on more supply to the point at which we could well see a softening of prices? The big issue with supply in the UK is twofold. One, there aren't enough um, experienced executives, management teams to actually um, go out there and, and create their own businesses. Uh, and secondly, there aren't the, the construction workers to do the work. Um, you know, so you can't just conjure up thousands of people to, to create uh, you know, the ex these extra houses that are needed. Um, so you can't turn the tap on any anymore in terms of output. It's going to take a uh, a large number of years that will, you know, whether it's you know an extra 2,000 people a year, 5,000 people a year that are coming into the industry to uh, to train up in terms of new skills, and and that all takes time. I mean, the housing associations, which are quasi-government bodies, not-for-profit organisations, they have massive balance sheets. Quite often, they've got lots of land. But they don't have the internal skills resource, certainly in terms of management, that can go off and start building hundreds and thousands of houses. Mm. They can't do it. So they have to use the private house builders. Yeah. OK, look, Clive, I'll have to leave it there. But thanks indeed for joining us uh, with your time there. Clive Lewis uh, joining us from Peel Hunt.